This interview is for the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress American Folklife Center, and it is with uh, Lloyd Chester Lane, and Lane is spelled L-A-I-N. Um, Mr. Lane was in the U.S. Navy, serving from November 11, 1942 to December 20, 1946. Today is Friday, March 7, 2008. My name is Harriet Williamson. Henry Radcliffe is the Director of Sound and Lighting and is also the videographer. We are in the television studio of WILL in Urbana, Illinois on the University of Illinois campus. Also in the studio is uh, Mr. Lane's wife, um, Alice Lillian Watson Lane. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Lane, today. Thank and you. I wanted to uh, find out a little bit about your background about where you were born and, and raised and your parents and... I was born not too far from here on Row Mine, <laughs> 1200 Row Mine in those days, 1923, mm -hmm. December. And uh, my father at that, well, let's see, I don't know what he was doing at that time. But anyway, my mother died when I was 10 months old and there was three children. And uh, I can remember being on Hickory Street in the first grade. And I remember him coming home probably 1929. I'm laid off, everything crashed. I guess he was a, something to do with uh, groceries or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember that. And uh, then later on, let's see, that was 29. Then I was in school 1930, November, Thanksgiving vacation. I was over at my. Uh, <clears throat> aunt and uncle over here on Water Street that time. And anyway, we was going to, to the Quality Bakery. Anyway, I slipped and broke this hair. And my cousin tried to get me to walk, because I couldn't, you know. And anyway, a man carried me back. And uh, the doctor come out, I guess. Anyway, they put a thing on here, a broken orange crate, you know, so keep it straight. Well, my father was that time uh, he was uh, invalid, he had a stroke. Well, he fell and struck his head and like a stroke, cut him in half. I think I was seven. Anyway, believe it or not, in those days, I was in that hospital six months with that leg. They had to mm -hmm. break it five times to get a straight one out of it. Mm. Can you imagine that? I almost, I didn't think I was ever gonna get out of there. Mm. Anyway, we went from there to the town of Lotus up west of Fisher. That's the reason I graduated from Fisher. And he had a house and a lot and a barn, well, outhouses and whatnot, and an orchard and all that, but no money. Well, he might have had some money for a few years. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we lived there from the time I was in the fourth grade till I graduated. And then I come down here. Mm -hmm. Of course, I come down every summer to work to make my clothes, you know, money for clothes and go back to school. Mm -hmm. You know, no income. And uh, she had six boys. My stepmother had six boys of us and a girl. She did a good job. She took care of him, too, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, we did, too. Then uh, when we come down here, that's when I tried to be a pilot, you know, at 42. Mm -hmm. Well, tell, tell me about that. Well, I tried to, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be a Navy pilot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when I went down in, you know, down here at that time, Champagne Post Office, I think they were down underneath there. Well, you have to pass all this. And I, I, I passed every written thing, mm -hmm. and, but I was under, seven pounds under. And in those days, you know, flying an airplane, you had to kick everything like this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even that one we had. Anyway, you had to weigh a certain pound, and, and I was, I think I was, nine or eight pounds under. Mm -hmm. Gave me so many months to do it, so I ate my way in. But when he sent me down there, that's when they caught me. <laughs> I couldn't get out to get anything to eat. Mm -hmm. So I come back home, and, and I, then I enlisted in November, the third, I, mm -hmm. yeah, the third one went up there, yeah. And I was in the V6 program, <clears throat> and that means six years. And uh, reserves, you know what I mean, U.S. Yeah, U.S. Naval Reserve, six years. And uh, anyway, when it come to be, after the war was over out there in Alameda, 
let's see, was it August they dropped the bomb? I can't remember mm -hmm. now. Anyway, I didn't get out till January. But in the meantime, uh, you had to have so many points. So I asked this lieutenant commander, I said, sir, do I have to stay in? I'm in this V-6 program. Well, you can either stay in or you can get out, but you have to be inactive for, you know, the rest of the time, to 48. And I can't think of, uh, I was trying to think of it the other day. One of the presidents here, boy, I can't think of that man's name. He's a real, real nice man. He was in the V-6 program, Navy V-6 program. And that's the only other one I ever heard was in it. Outside of me, I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I don't know how I got so in. So your there. commitment when you signed up then was for six years. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and, I, and so, so then when it came time to leave the Navy, did were you? Had I had you, my points to get out, uh -huh, uh -huh. but he, I could also by being in the V6 program, I could have stayed the six years. Okay. If I had, I'd have probably made a career out of it. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, I don't want to make a career out of it. Uh -huh. Well, I think one thing. After being over there, sweating out airplanes, you know, sweating out your men coming back, mm -hmm. you're kind of spastic, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't go back to, well, like Alice said, I went back to business college in 50, was it 50 or 51, Alice? 51, 50? Anyway, oh, after I got out, I was also, a, 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 <laughs> what do you want to call it, a civilian. And I was an assistant crew chief on B-29s up the field for six months. So did that require you to be in the Navy or were you no, a no, civilian? No, 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 I didn't count. That you, didn't count. So I, just, a, I just went up there and got, I got uh -huh. a job with them. Uh -huh. and that's when I met her. When they, anyway, when they, uh, your six months, then they had furloughs. I was a 90-day furlough, which all counted. And at that time, I think I went to sell an insurance to 50 or 51. Then I went to business college over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I come over here. Wait a minute, when did I come over here? I, I had uh, 30 years. Well, I come over here in 51. Mm -hmm. I was in a guided missile program. And, and then I went into physics. Bardeen and all of them were there. Hey, mm -hmm. I was going to go over there Thursday, and I didn't. Anyway, uh, then I went out to Mumford Hall, Dean's office in the Bursar's office, then went with uh, the postal for, for a while, come back at all counted for retirement, and I went to operation maintenance out there. It was a, a, a counted out there. And if you'll notice in the paper, something about $17 million, the vice president or president has to cough up to pay the bill. On, for, this is for the uh, university? For the university, uh -huh. yeah. And that was, uh, Utilities, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I, I was telling them uh, when I left in '81, we were giving them five hundred thousand for ga uh, natural gas in those days, two eighty-five for electricity. Can you imagine that? My goodness! And look how much it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah. And the operate and maintain the campus went through the uh, operation maintenance was twenty-eight million, eighty eighty-one, mm -hmm. which was large. Mm -hmm. And what it is now? 65 million, 85 million. Well, I think, the, well, you're, uh, I think your utilities are 20 million a year, mm -hmm. I think. Isn't that something? Yeah. Anyway. Well, you, so you were disappointed because you couldn't be a pilot, but you, right. you were, you did enlist in the Navy. Yes. And then where did you take your first training? Uh, first training, you know what? I was uh, up to boot camp. <clears throat> I think it's only there four weeks, and they give you five day week <laughs> leave down here already. And I come back, uh, John Day here in town. Oh, and Bob Heben and his brother was 19. Bob Heben was 15. Took a uh, birth certificate, changed it. But you know what? He weighed 130 pounds, and he was shaving. <laughs> and he looked older than me. And uh, anyway, we both went to boot camp. Oh, we went to Naval. Navy Pier in the aviation school there for, uh, she went over there in December of 42, graduating June of 43. Now what kind of training did they give you while you they were They give there? you everything about maintaining airplanes and mm -hmm. fixing airplanes and, and, and uh, making parts or doing some, uh, you know, like if you needed a hinge door thing and all that, mm -hmm. yeah. 
do all that maintenance. So, so not only maintaining the plane, but also teaching you how to yes. make the parts. Yeah, if somewhere. you had to have them, uh -huh. you know. And uh, then uh, another thing, I think we had a Corsair there. Oh, in those days, we had some two winged things too. The people, you know, that you, you know, where they torture a lot of stuff on. Mm -hmm. it. Anyway, well, this one morning, you had to turn that prop around before you could start the airplane or to get the oil out of the bottom cylinders. And you know that backfired hit one of the men on the head? Yeah. They had to take that prop off. <laughs> he knocked that prop out of out of thing, oh, but it didn't goodness. hurt him. But boy, it hit him, knocked him out, I think, for a while. I never will forget that. Now, after you uh, did that training, did they give you even more training, or? Well, what happened, We uh, in the meantime, when I was up there, uh, they, they asked us, they, they didn't make you do this now, they asked people, do you want to be an aerial gunner? Yes, I wanted to fly, so I'll be an aerial gunner. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was standing in line here and the commander was asking questions, this man above me, he says, uh, do you want to die for your country? Yes, get out. I come up here, you want to die for your country? And I said, no, I don't. You go on. And I said, sir, how come you did that? He said, die for country. Now, you, you'll fight like mad. He wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way they looked at it, I guess. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's interesting. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way I looked at it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was really something. Anyway, then I went out to Alameda, then Lake Chabot with Robert Stack School, mm -hmm. gunnery school. Yeah. And what was your training while you were there? Uh, they had a track, railroad tracks. That, well, they had a hand car with a target on it, okay? Mm-hmm. And this thing would come in, they'd go out 1,500 miles, 1,000 miles, 500 feet and all that. And they train you with these, uh, I think it's, no, 50 calibers. And you had to shoot this thing. So many, I think it was four or five weeks we had training like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if they were hitting the center or not. I might have, but I don't remember it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we graduated. Then we were assigned to Squadron 57. And uh, I mean, I was, I, Bob was, this little 15 year old. Anyway, in the meantime, we was in school, he wanted me to turn him in. I said, finish school, then get out. You know, get your job at the airport. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he stayed in. He came up and said, don't turn me in. So I didn't. Mm -hmm. So we went overseas, and uh, he went somewhere else, I think, with Admiral Calhoun's outfit there. But that's where we were at. And there was seven of us went to the scouting squadron. But when they signed us there, before we left, I said, well, I, I said, I don't know whether we're going to make this back or not. You get a carrier, you dive bombers, the zeros are knocking them down. You know, I mean, that was the truth. And, and I was lucky we were land-based. We so were lucky. when you left California, then were you on a ship and were you sent I was to on the a Pacific? USS Tabena, and it was a, a ship that the United States, I think, grabbed from Germany that was made in Holland, had wooden decks on it. That's kind yeah. of interesting. Anyway, when we get on this thing, this uh, major run the thing, it wasn't a Navy man. It was a troop ship, you know what, actually what it was. And uh, okay, you boys are aerial gunners, and they put us in the tubs uh, of the thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tubs meaning that gun if, tubs, if the, you if know, the, twenty millimeters had twenty okay, millimeters. Okay, so gear. if the plane is attacked, you're going to yeah, be I guess that's what they wanted. Anyway, mm -hmm. stand watch. He's on four hours and four hours off. Man, you know. Anyway, this one I don't know how many days we were out. Spied this periscope. Man, I looked around. And here's what a raft-like thing you can knock off and get on if in case he's sunk it. Anyway, the tapped them bare down on it, and guess what? The Japanese had had a periscope on a square raft. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they, they let them shoot and everything at it, but they, they didn't sink it. Anyway, so we- So it was, it was a false, it was Yeah, it was a, a false rig. thing, okay. yeah. Anyway, by being on that, by yourself going over it, you had a zigzag. And the zigzag, that's how, you know, you wouldn't let the submarines keep track of you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were on that thing, See, we left there September the 2nd, in 43. Of course, I signed to that in 40, in August. We went up to Cook Islands and different places, New Cal, and then went up to uh, New Hebrides groups, uh, Esperitos. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, uh, 
that's when the Japanese uh, big plane, or I guess it was a scouting plane or something, come over. And you know, that one, the first night I counted 21 uh, lights on him. You know, I could see a shiny thing. It happened twice. Well, the third night, I guess he's trying to keep us awake or something, I don't know. Third night, I wasn't going to get out of bed. <laughs> the man says, Lane, get out of there. I'll put you on a report. And I grabbed my blankets and went out in the foxhole with my gas mask. I slept the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what was it like being on that transport ship? Were, were, was it jam-packed or was Well, you it... know what? That thing was so old, I probably shouldn't say this, but say you go to the restroom, they had troughs. Oh, you saw that trough, that <laughs> ship would go like that and everything go this way and that way underneath. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. And you could only, the water you could drink was only on 40 minutes a day. Oh. So you had to shave with the salt water. Well, of course, William's shaving cream would do it. And the shower, if you take a shower, you know, you just uh, didn't have any soap or anything. <laughs> or anyway, you just kind of washed yourself, you know. Anyway, a lot of guys let their beards grow, but I, I tried it, but it, 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 the things that didn't grow, so I, I shaved from then on. <laughs> anyway, we was on that thing. Oh, we hit this new Hebrew group. And gosh, I don't know, here's a, you, you look into the island, it's all, uh, Coconut trees, you know what I mean? Nothing in there. I mean, that's where you look at it. Here comes two Marines and uh, one of these, uh, looks like a big thing going on land and water. He come out and pick us up, take us in. Boy, when you get there, boy, it was just full of people. A bunch of ants like, you know, but you couldn't tell it from there. And uh, then we went over to Admiral Calhoun's place there. <laughs> Yeah, we, we were waiting for, you know, get back to New Caledonia, I guess. Anyway, we were out, didn't have anything to do in, those, in a way, but they put us in his yard here. He had a little hut, well, we called it a bamboo hut and all that. The nice living room and, you know, kitchen. And he had four Philippines or someone, you know, doing his work. And we had to pick up these coconuts fall on the ground. People probably didn't know this. They bred the mosquito that would bite you. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Malaria mosquitoes. So you pick those up, put them in a the truck, and I think his truck, uh, take them down and take them over to another island. They put all these natives over there, and they take that and make soap out of it. Mm. Yeah. And Pete Palmolive owned all this grove, I guess. Everyone, the sea bees cut down the trees, coconut trees. Everyone they cut down, the United States paid Pete Palmolive $25 in those days. Mm. But they, they, they would make uh, round things like that, you know, instead of cement, then they'd put these concert huts on them. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. way they did that. The Seabees did that. I never forget that. Anyway, we uh, was out there picking them up one time. This one boy, I think it was Sienza. Boy, that's pretty good, Lane. They pay us to go through the school, probably cost them 5000 to send them through the school, and here we are picking up these darn coconuts. <laughs> they had no come out of his house that time. Well, you would have seen an old man like me pick them up. No, sir. <laughs> I think he's probably 51 or 52. <laughs> so Calhoun was the... Um, he was just something to do with the... the was he the commander? Of well, he was... Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, well, oh, wait a minute. I think I have it down here. Esprit, Commander South Pacific Fleet Air. Uh, okay. And uh, now was he, was of course you had another admiral down in New Mayo. That's where President Nixon was. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name, but he but you know. Anyway, it was one man worked in architects at the at the O and M. I can't think of his name now. He was a farmer's mate, a chief, and he was on he down there where where uh, Nixon was. Of course, he, he would tell us that, you know after that. So the, so we're talking about Richard Nixon, and he was on. Pardon? That's Richard Nixon, who became president, he was on, yeah, he was on New Caledonia, New Caledonia at yeah. the time that you were there. But I was up on the airfield, and he was down here and oh. probably around New Mayo, you know, wherever the admirals had their business, you know what I mean. Anyway, then later on, he went up to some other island, I think, Green Island or something, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Might be in his records. Now, besides having you pick up these coconuts, what else, what else did the Navy have in store for you? Well, that's all. We, we only did that a week or two. Mm -hmm. Then we caught this. I can't think of the ship's name, and I don't have it on here. I can't think of it. 
it wasn't that one. But he, but while I was there, that's when I was telling you the U.S. US uh, Tabena let us off. Then they went up north, probably New, you know, all the way up New Caledonia. I mean Guadalcanal or something. And they come back, and that's when I looked, and they put a torpedo right where we were. Twenty-five of us in the front of it, like this. We bunked right here, coming over. Good thing we got off of that thing, wasn't it? No, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Well, what the Japanese put a torpedo oh, through it. Oh, the Japanese yeah. sunk that ship. Yeah, oh, they didn't goodness. sink it. They put it in, and they just tie it off, and they come back. Ah. And I thought, boy, we got off that thing in a mm -hmm. good time. It probably happened another week or two after we got off of it. Mm -hmm. I never forget that. Yeah. Then uh, we were on this one ship going down, and what was oh, most of the time. When you cross the equator, they really initiate you the Navy. Boy, they'd throw you in the garbage, they'd do anything. This, uh, I don't know, well, well maybe, that was a, maybe that was on the ship that the Army got. Maybe it was on the Franklin, I don't know, I forgot. But this uh, captain or, or major was Army guy. We didn't have to do all that. But mm -hmm. they give us a little card I have at home, showed that I was on the equator. Now, how many times did you cross the equator? I uh, went down once. Then back, then down once, and then back, back again. Yeah. So we were on New Cal Caledonia, and then we we hit there first. Okay. Oh, when I was on the ship there, we hit a reef. Blue. They should have waited for what do they call these men. I forget what they call them. Uh, you know, when you go in the harbors now, Tenders you put a, or, yeah, you put uh -huh. a man on there and he brings you in. Uh -huh. Anyway, they hit this thing, and the plane. I mean, the ship went like this. What happened, it knocked off the bottom plate, but they could seal it off. And I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess they just sealed it off. Anyway, we slipped in there. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, while we were going over, they had a bunch of, uh, oh, I forgot what kind of trucks they call them. Anyway, for the Army and the Marines and all that, and this is all full of candy. Anyway, this uh, major, Boy, you didn't hardly eat hardly anything on that ship. But well, we found out it was there, and the next thing you know, we was taking the candy out of that thing and <laughs> using it. Oh, and the man would bake bread. We'd go down and steal the bread. We never got caught. But I don't know why he did that. Well, I guess the Army ate those silly things, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we did that. I think when they got that thing unloaded, they were surprised all that candy was going all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Because we ate a lot of it out of there. <laughs> I never will forget that. <laughs> so you yeah. were on New Caledonia for how long? Well, we were just there probably two days. Mm -hmm. Then that's when we went at Best Burritos. Well, meantime, my squadron was there, but I didn't know it, or none of us men knew that. And <clears throat> what's happened, the reason we probably didn't go to 57 earlier. You had to wait till some of these men were shipped back, then you'd come in, see? That's probably what happened. I think we were up here at the Admiral's place there maybe two weeks. Mm -hmm. and then we went in there, yeah. I'm sorry, so you went from New Caledonia to Esperito? Yeah. Es uh -huh. It's Esperito, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, Esperito, that another, that's a New Hebrides group. Okay, and that's another island. And how far, is that correct, another island? Pardon? Was that another island? That well, was part of the New Hebrides group. Okay. Yeah. And how far away then would that be from, oh, boy. from New Caledonia? Would oh, it take boy. a while to get there or was it? I'm just Gosh, trying to. I think it was three or four days getting okay, down there. Okay, so it, I think it's so. still a, a yeah. major trip. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, when we went down there, they picked us up in trucks. Then we went up, up there to, to 57. But in the meantime, that some of these men hadn't left yet, so what they did, we we did everything. You might uh, work in uh, mess hall, you might work outside here, do this and do that. Anyway, then later on, uh, before I signed to my plane, you know, went out there too. Anyway, the captain found out the way I was raised that I could set tables and stuff. Mm -hmm. Follow me, and they had three chiefs. You had electrician, chief, and then you had the one with the line, and you had melody. Oh, then uh, when Admiral Halsey would come in, his man was a, 
a chief, you know, engineer on his, and then he, he was there, and I'd set the table for four. Oh. <laughs> I did that for a month or two, until mm -hmm. they found the man that, you know, the, they had to wait for the man to come mm -hmm. in to do it. And actually, I think I only worked an hour each time, you know, because you'd set the table, you'd take the stuff over, and they'd wash it for you, and all you had to do was put it away. <laughs> It was quite a thing. But then I'd go down and sometime work on the plane, too. But well, if not, I'd go over on the islands. Two of us would go over on the islands where the natives were, and we'd swim with them. And the natives couldn't understand we wore our trunks. They, they went with no clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the men. But no were, women around. Was the swimming recreational, or was it to catch fish? Just something to do. Uh -huh, Just uh -huh. something to do. Kill uh -huh. time. Yeah. Now, the plane... I think it was about five miles. You'd walk five miles or something. Just do something to do. So that's that sounds like a very healthy yeah. thing to be able to walk. But and these swim men, and then... these natives, couldn't get over. We wore our trunks. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't now, wear anything. <laughs> did they speak uh, any English? No, uh -huh. uh, no. If it was, I, I didn't understand them. But I mean, you know, you did they understand it. what was happening in? Now, if they did, I don't know that either. Uh -huh. But I know a lot of times. See, we always had a theater every night outside, uh -huh. and. Uh, Sometimes you'd be sitting in a theater and all these natives would come in like that. Oh, interesting. And they'd sit down in front and watch that movie. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When that movie was over, they'd disappear like that and you didn't see them. Uh -huh. <laughs> they just come in on us. Yeah, it was amazing. They were amazing people. <laughs> oh, one th oh, every seven days over there, I think it was six to seven of us in a group, you know, you, you would uh, be down in the field. And uh, every seventh day, you had the day off, and they give you a command car and a case of beer, you know. And we'd go all over this island. <laughs> anyway, we was going to cross the Theo Pass, and it was in the mornings it was open this way to go over the mountain. Then the afternoon it was open that way to get back. So we go over. In the meantime, we stopped and visit this native village. And you know what? <laughs> We walked into that village and bam, boy, there's people that disappeared just like that. Of course, mm -hmm. we had guns on us, we had 45s. And I looked around and all I saw was a little baby laying on the floor, you know. So we sat there in this nice place, clean place. Pretty soon they started coming back in. Mm -hmm. And this chief was 90 years old in those days. That's unusual. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he come over, he talked to us and everything, and he saw that we weren't, you know, causing any trouble. But you know what? Uh, he gave us a big thing of bananas, the re green ones, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we take those back. Of course, you put them underneath the bed, you know, where it's dark and they'd ripen. Then we went back, we took these garbage cans, new ones, and had him put his bananas in there and put the lid on there and then write them up. He thought that was pretty good. But that old man, he let us know that what has happened in his young life, they killed the white people and they ate the people. Yeah. How did he Anyway, the, he the Catholic uh, ministry come over uh -huh. and, you know, and he was one of them, you know, they saved probably, you know, religion and all that. Because you know what? He had one of the biggest shells. I think it must have been that big around and that deep. Where he found it, I don't know. When you walked into his church, that's when he used their water to go like this. Mm. And uh, he said, that uh, he said, you know what? They come over here and uh, when, when he was younger and they, you know, religion and all this. And taught, taught him God and everything. But he says, you know what? And some of that thing is, you don't worry about things, God will take care of you. You said, my men won't work. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was that way. It was really something. <laughs> we talked to him once or twice, I think, all the time. But then we went over to Theo. Seven of us going to this uh, real nice, probably see it up north here, these big white homes like things. It was a saloon, is what it was, I guess, or a hotel. We went in there and sat down. We wanted a beer. No serve Americans. No serve Americans. Gosh. These other two boys with me from Chicago, they, they were a little older and everything. Well, you know what? 
he wouldn't serve us, and they they grabbed a couple of bottles, and they, I swear there was a mirror, must have been 10 or 20 feet like this, and then down like that. Bam, boy, they broke that son of a gun. Mm. Anyway, we left. So anyway, uh, when we come back, General Rose was the head of the army on, on, on there. He put that off no limits. Mm -hmm. Admiral Halsey said, hey, the Navy took this island, they can go anywhere they want to go. So we went, we would go back. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's funny, they, they mined uh, nickel, on, you know, then ship it out on this uh, Theo Pass, or Theo. Now, were the people <clears throat> at Theo, were they not native people? They were they, from they another were, country? Uh, they were uh, French, French. And, and they uh -huh. were, what do you want, what was that, what did they call them? Oh boy, it was a name. Not, not Creole or... Vichy, Vichy oh, French, they oh, were Vichy French, okay. yeah, that's okay. right, they were Vichy French, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. But I'll tell you what, they served us beer at. <laughs> but I don't know who paid for that broken mm -hmm. thing. I didn't break it, but they, we didn't pay for it. Were the Vichy French involved in the mining? In the mining, yeah, uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason they wouldn't serve us, you know, they were Vichy French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, also, also he said that the Navy grabbed this island and said they go anywhere they want. So we went anywhere we went. What's oh, we went on a one place. Oh, we had a, uh, I forgot, I got a picture of it. Anyway, I forgot what they call this boat. Or sh well, it's a boat. Six or seven of my pictures are on there. Anyway, we go on this one island. And holy cow, I stepped out of there and there was Snakes, coral, coral snakes, they call them. They were poisonous. Man, they were everywhere. So we got back, went to this one island. There were deer on there. There was any kind of animal you wanted to shoot at was there. So anyway, later on, killed a couple of deer. I wasn't with them, but they cut deer and brought them back and they put them in the camp there and they'd, you know, cut it open and everything, put it in the, we had a big walk in refrigerator, I guess. Anyway, put it in there. Anyway, Halsey says, you boys can't do that anymore. He said, that belongs to the governor of the island. That's his hunting ground. Oh, <laughs> so we didn't go back anymore. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. But they didn't get after us for it. <laughs> I never will forget that. They, so, they were good people. So Admiral Halsey was, was also located on? Well, he would come down, uh -huh. I guess, to talk to these admirals down uh -huh. here and then the admiral here. You know, I don't know. I mean, that's probably what I, you know. Do you want to talk about one of the scenes that you witnessed at an airfield? Was that on that? That, that was on, on on Tontuda Air Base in New Caledonia. Okay, so that was in New Caledonia, not yeah. on this island. Yeah, and was what on, was yeah. it that happened that you saw? Pardon? What was it that you saw when you were there at that airfield? That's base? when uh, when they landed to probably visit, you know, have a meeting with this admiral here. And that's who, when we, that's who, when they who come was down. in the plane? That was Admiral King. He was a head of the. I mean, you know, in, in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. Then Admiral Nimitz, and Admiral uh, Halsey, and Admiral Calhoun. All four of them come out of that. So they all came to New Caledonia. What, yeah. Do you know what year what that was? It was in early 45, because uh -huh. I, I left there in June of 45. Uh -huh. It was in between January and June, you mean. I mean, we'll forget So you that. Had, had seen them? Uh, yeah, deep I was plane. on a four wheel, what we call a mule you tow airplanes with, and I was driving this thing. And, mm -hmm. That's when he had those there, and I just stopped and took a look. I thought, I'm going to see these people. But you know, in the meantime, before that, Admiral Halsey's plane landed. He had a four-engine, uh, it, it was a B-24, but a single tail, and we call him something else. I forgot what we call him. Anyway, he had an engine out on this thing. <clears throat> so there was a wrecked B-24 over here. So the boys went over and was working on this thing, taking that engine out and going to take his out and put this one on there. <laughs> and anyway, this big old, I don't know whether he's a, a colonel or major or what, he come over. What are you Navy guys doing there? You can't take it. That belongs to us. Well, Admiral Holsey said to come over and take that. Oh, 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 he says, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget the guy saying that. Anyway, they run that up. They had to run that up about six or seven hours. And anyway, this one man, and we were working on something there. Like, well, here's a shadow here, say. You drop something, ask them to pick it up, and then Halsey would hand it back up to him. And of course, we didn't know it was him at that time. Nobody knew that. But you had to run that thing up six hours to really. What does that mean? 
Well, you make sure it was all running and everything. You you change engines. You had to make sure that thing was you know working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> you did that about three days straight. You know, make sure it's going to be all right. Now I interrupted your flow. We we went back to New Caledonia, but you were really on the island of Esperitas before then. Right. Yeah. And it, when now, when you were flying, would you like to talk about about that experience? Well, where, see, when where when you, you do that? when you come, there was two planes. You know, you fly like this. You know, like this. Okay, you were up around four hours, and you had to cover so much area. But you know, planes, even today, I mean, people don't know, you don't fly like this, you fly like that, you know that. And of course, the world's round. You, you, planes fly like that. You know, when you leave New York, you're going to California and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, you would go approximately, uh, let's see, we cruised 120 knots. That's 100, about 150 mile an hour, 140 maybe. Anyway, you go an hour this way, an hour that way. And in the meantime, you're looking. You know everything. And what are you looking for? Well, subs or you know anything. Anyway, mm -hmm. then you then you go four hours here, and then you come back. See, you could only stay up about four hours, a little over four hours. So we only uh, had four hundred gallon of gas, I think. How <clears throat> how low were you flying in order to be able to? I, I would say we were up at probably two thousand feet, maybe twenty five hundred feet. Mm -hmm. Now, if but we never had to go up to ten thousand. If we went, I went up to ten thousand once on a, on on a test hop, but you didn't, you couldn't stay up over ten thousand feet because you didn't have oxygen, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I think we had oxygen bottle, but you never what, went that high. What uh, type of plane were you? In? That was a dauntless dive bomber. A dauntless yeah, dive bomber. Yeah, that was one of the first. Uh -huh. And that sunk more tonnage than everything over in the Pacific. How? This time. How? Would you be able to see? Was there in the floor? Was there? No, a you just look out the cockpit. Okay, so you, yeah. you could see easily out of the cockpit. Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily out of the cockpit. And you were behind the pilot. Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now and we had twin thirties. Twin thirties meaning guns. Uh, yeah, twin thirty machine guns. Okay, so there he were had there the one twin or two more. in the nose. Okay, so there were, so there was someone in the nose. Yeah, we, we had, he, the pilot, pilot controlled the 250s, we controlled the 230s, uh -huh. he controlled the two 100 bombs underneath the wings, one here and one there, and mm -hmm. the 500 pounder underneath the belly. Okay. 500 pounder. So if you saw were, a sub, you would try to sink him with it. Okay, so there were three people in this plane? No, just two. Two just people? Two of us, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just two of us. And yeah. during the time that you flew those, were did you find any uh, no. submarines or? No, uh, we were. I, I said we were doing scouting, and what what we were there for, you know, here's Australia here, mm -hmm. and here's New Caledonia. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason they had us mainly there, they didn't want the Japanese to come back around, probably there. I mean, that's what they told us, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what we were mainly there for. Mm -hmm. Now, before I got in there, they they sunk a sub, but 25 men got off of it, and they captured him. And uh, you know what? I guess the man said, well, Lloyd, we had him in a fence like this, and they thought we was going to kill him. <laughs> they didn't, you know. Anyway, when they first, that squadron went over, they had these twin, was that a twin wing plane with a, with a platoons on it? They could land on land or water. That's when they first went over, I don't know, maybe... Oh, I'd say 41, I don't know, after the, you know, after they, I don't know, when they declared war. Maybe 42, and then they changed the Dauntless Dive Bombers. And every time these aircraft carriers would get Alice's TBMs and all that stuff, that was the newer ones. Then they would give us the old ones, mm -hmm. different places. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, how, what what island were you flying from? For from this, New Caledonia. From New Caledonia yeah, for uh -huh. that activity. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then. So how long did you do that? Uh, let's see. I got there in November of 43. I was signed to them in August, but I think it was November before we really got settled and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I flew, well, when I was plane captain, I only had five, four hours a month. Mm. Anyway, uh, when you play, then, then I made second class petty officer, the rest of the boys were third class. And then the chief would take off, and then I have to take over. And that's, uh, you know, you had the flights. 
See, here's, I'll show you. Well, I mean, I'll just read this to you. Okay. Okay. I'll just read this to you if I can. Okay, here's how we would start off at 0515 to 0845. We sent up four planes. Mm -hmm. Then 730 to 11 o'clock, this, these planes, well, you know, well 730, 0730, we'd send up another two planes. And these people come back at 845, this 730 would come back at 11. Then uh, later on at 10 o'clock, you'd send one back, send two planes back up, and then they, they might only stay up, well, they're supposed to stay up four hours, but they had 1330 or whatever. Then you send up another two, let's see, it'd be four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 planes during that whole day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know when I was plane captain or whether the other men felt this or not. When I sent my plane up, I had number 10 right here, Lieutenant Sample. And uh, I always sweat them out. I don't know why. You always what? I sweat them. Well, I call it sweat out. You're worried about them. Yeah. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Uh -huh. I'd have been flying in the darn thing. Mm -hmm. you, you sweat them out for three or four hours. Mm -hmm. And maybe over the period of time, maybe that's what it helped me get my, I don't know. Anyway, I had a spastic colon, and uh, here's here's my plane number ten. Then, uh, actually, you're supposed to throw this away. You know, when you're through with it, because you know you don't want the Japanese to have this if they come in. Anyway, while we had available, now look, now we never had any combat, but our planes were either getting worked on or something happened to them. In mm -hmm. the sample here, the flight officer put down available, two gas trucks, and one bicycle if the tar was fixed. <laughs> you know, and I thought, well, oh, I'm going to keep that thing. You know, and I did. Well, this is a Xerox copy. So when these planes would go up, you they are, would they be, Land -based, fo would they be following a, a different pattern? Well, yeah, a different uh -huh. squares, you know, uh -huh. you know, like say they were there. I don't know how many square miles. Well, you could figure it out if there's, mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. Four, I never figured this out. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. See, each one of them had to cover 400 miles, say. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's over 4,000 miles, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, you were in sectors. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how you did it, you know. You covered so many square miles. Now, during the time that you were involved with this, did any of the planes uh, have any problems? Yes, we had attacked? one boy, and uh, he, he was a plane captain. And he was out, and the plane cough was going down. The pilot told him to jump. And I think at 1,500 feet, the pilot did jump, but the boy probably thought the plane was come out. Well, when I call him boy, we were boys, you know what I mean. Anyway, when the pilot hit the land, I mean, hit the water, his chute opened, and boy, it saved him. Mm. This boy waited too damn late, and it killed him. Just, mm -hmm. You know, if you're up that high and hit the water, it's like mm -hmm. hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. It killed him. And you know what? He, they had him buried on New Maya, a cemetery in, in New Caledonia, in a white thing. And of course, they sent it to his parents, probably killed in action, you know, mm -hmm. actually. But I don't know whether they ever went back and sent the body back here mm -hmm. or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some of, some of them did. But I know he's uh, buried there. Yeah. That was too bad, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. But he had confidence in the brain. He thought it would take off, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, and the pilot couldn't wait any longer. So see, the pilot would have been dead too. Now, so the pilot was rescued and... Well, and yeah, they rescued him. But you know what, after that happened, uh, this uh, destroyer rescued him. Mm. But they were out so far, it took three days or four days for that thing to get to here. Mm -hmm. And then after, I, th I don't know whether Admiral Halsey or any of the admirals or something had to do with it, then we got a, what we call a, a flying duck. You know, it was a, a plane that would land on water mm -hmm. or land on that. A great big thing like this. Okay, after that, if somebody went down, they did land, take it, and bring it back. Mm. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we kept that thing there. Well, we never had to use it again. We never had to use it. But that boy there, that was something. <laughs> anyway, uh, I would say to me, there was a lot of pressure. I mean, of course, I was young probably. I don't mm -hmm. know. Now some of these boys, 
uh, by me maybe having a father, you know, the way I did, I didn't have any mm -hmm. father to tell me. And then you had to take care of him. You worried about him. You mm -hmm. did this and that. And then these boys from Chicago, boy, I said, what did you guys do? Well, Lane, if you wanted to buy a part for your bicycle, we'd go out and steal that thing and sell it to you. <laughs> that, <laughs> not, no kidding. That's the way they were. <laughs> or you want a part for that automobile? We'd go get it for you. <laughs> he was, uh, oh, and one boy, Nincevich, his mother dealt uh, cards for Al Capone's place. And you know that man could take a deck of cards, four of us sitting here, he'd give this man a straight, this man a flush, this man three of a kind, and he'd give himself four of a kind. He, he could do that with a deck of cards, but now he never pulled it on us. But every month, he went over to the Army guys, they were black men, and they were uh, an engineer group, real nice people, real good. But he'd go over there payday and he'd come back with a bunch of money. Now, but he didn't you do that on us. I almost mm -hmm. fell over how he did that. I still don't know how he did it. Today when he'd take a deck of cars and do that. You know? So your recreation on the island was was things like the... Uh, we played baseball, uh -huh. uh, softball. Well, wait a minute, we played more softball than baseball. Then if you like to play like Alex, they had uh, uh, basketballs, but I didn't play that much. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had, oh, they gave us two bottles of beer at night. I sold mine for 10 cents a piece. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after I'm over there, say you're doing this for a year, the flight surgeon say, Lane, you ought to drink a beer once in a while, you, you know, like this. And you know what? He was right. You drink a beer too. That by God, you would just, you know, <laughs> relax. <laughs> that was something. And you know what? I uh, drank a lot of beer up till I was married. Well, when I'm in the house, I did. I didn't drink too much. But anyway, if I felt nervous, I'd you know do that. But then later on, I went to uh, Dr. Hall here in town. He used to be the head of uh, the medical school thing here, mm -hmm. and he was the best heart man. And I had a fast heart. Anyway, uh, he gave me some little phenobarb, you know, that, that, that would calm me. He, he knew what I had. He said, Lloyd, he said, you got that spastic cold in there. Yeah. And I doctored him until he, he went out mm -hmm. on a cruise, not a cruise, but out here at the Rocky Mountains or somewhere out there and ride horses. He fell off and hit his head and killed him. He was only about 61, 62. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a big loss for yeah, our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jack was his first name, yeah. and I knew him real well, so I, I had him doctor me all the time because I had a fast heart and all that, mm -hmm. and, but he'd give me some phenobarb, and, and you know, it was unplug you, whatever it was, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, anyway, when I was discharged, no, when I come back uh, after the 20 some months, you had to fill out a medical thing, you know, they asked you a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. You have a broken leg, yeah. Uh, anything wrong? I'm more nervous than normal. And I thought, boy, they'll send me to Colorado for two weeks, and boy, I can fish and all that. And that doctor says, well, he said, that leg by you? And I said, well, I can tell you a change of weather and everything. Why didn't you tell us we kept you in the States? <laughs> Just like that. Mm. But I wouldn't want to stay in the States. Anyway, when I was 43, that all quit. But anyway, they come back. Let's see. Anyway, when he was talking to me there, and he said, oh, you're nervous. And I said, yes. And I said, I thought, sure. He said, you know, they've given these guys R&R &R for two weeks in, in Colorado fishing and taking mm -hmm. life easy. Anyway, oh, you're going home for 30 days. You get in bed at 10 o'clock every night and just relax. <laughs> now, I said, I haven't been home for almost three years, which I didn't do that. But I drank a lot of beer for like 30 days. Mm -hmm. But I didn't bother anyone. You know, just calm you, you know. <laughs> it worked, though. You might drink six or seven bottles during the day in those days, but by golly, it worked. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I slept good, though, I'll say that. Anyway, my uncle, I was staying with him. We was over here in this Pops restaurant there on Main Street. I come in, I ordered a beer, drank that sound gun, I ordered another one, and he's sitting there. God darn, Lord, you're drinking a lot of beer. I said, well, it calms you down. <laughs> of course, he drank, too. I mean, he drank a few of them. <laughs> now, when you were uh, 
in the military and out of the U.S., did you keep it in touch with people back home? Uh, yes. How well, did you do that? I probably shouldn't say this when I, I don't know whether it's popular in all the places it's at, but I think when I left over, I was writing probably 10 ladies, uh, two here. Uh, I was writing my stepmother, and I was writing all my, see, I had the, uh, a real brother in the army, and a stepbrother in the Marines, and a, and uh, and John Day, you know, went in with us. I would write him letters. He's in submarines, and uh, there's the last. So I think I was only writing about one or two people. Mm -hmm. My father died in September '44, and uh, I was working on an airplane with uh, with Fitzgerald. You know what? Fitzgerald was one of the prop men at. Uh, Hollywood out there, when he was a mechanic. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> anyway, this uh, what was I going to say there? So, do you, did you hear at that time then about your father? Oh, yeah, then death? oh, I, that's right. I was working here on this plane, and the two chiefs come out in the car and took his thing out of his pocket and handed it to me and cablegram. Mm -hmm. Put it in my pocket, went back to work. About forty minutes later, they come out. Chief Mullen said, Lloyd, do you know what's in that? And I said, yeah, that's my father, I bet. He said, yes, it is. And it just seemed like that knocked the props out of me, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe that made him more spasty, I don't know. Anyway, I, he said, you're going back. So I get in the car, and I tell him about, you know, what happened all this time. Mm -hmm. Well, Lloyd, then you probably expected this. And I said, well, not this soon, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it seemed like uh, when that happened, Oh, then my stepmother remarried in October, October, November. Mm -hmm. So I sent her some money to help, you know. Well, anyway, I stopped it. And she sent a thing there. And, well, we could have used the money and all that. And I thought, well, you're getting married. I didn't say that to her, but she's married. Anyway, uh, just seemed like I knocked the props out of my uh -huh. because I was with him so, so much for probably 10, mm -hmm. 10 until I went in the Navy, about 18. And, and plus the fact yeah. that you weren't home, you yeah, were away. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So many yeah. thousands of miles away. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? The other men was different than I was. I think the reason, now I, my uh, stepbrother went like that, but I mean, I felt that I didn't have a father to teach me anything, and I felt like uh, that leans off of quiet, oh, which I probably was with them, I don't know. <laughs> of course, I didn't drink in crowds like they did. Mm -hmm. You know, I roller skated a lot in the States. And uh, but this 15-year-old, I told you he'd shave. He weighed 130 pounds. He dated women all the way from 20 to 35 <laughs> up here in Chicago. That's not the darnest thing I ever saw. <laughs> oh, we were out. He drank too much wine. So we come out. <clears throat> we're waiting for trying to hail a cab. Anyway, here he is dancing and doing this and that. You know, a woman come up. They hit something out of that gut darn sailor and all that. Anyway, you know what? There's a man over there, and she hollered at him. He was a detective. And I said, wait a minute. I said, we're going back to Navy Pier. And I said, I will take him back. He says, OK. And we grabbed the cab and went back. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that woman should have said a darn word myself, but she did. You know, I thought that was terrible. <laughs> oh, Bob, he was something. Now, you had mentioned a little while ago that when you um, came back home that they they sent you home directly? Well, we yeah, we come home. Uh, I left there in June sometime, latter part of June. We hit uh, Pier 2, that we come out, out of Pier 2, you know, to go over. Anyway, I think it was 6 or 7. Anyway, we come down. I was the highest rank, so I'm down first. I don't know why. But anyway, we didn't have any what you call clothes, uniforms or anything. And uh, we just had work clothes. Anyway, that's when the, the commander, I went down there, and here's this blue bus in a band playing for who wouldn't have it. And I come down there, and he come over and greeted us. I said, well, what's this all about? He said, they said you seven guys rode us so darn long. They said, come and greet you, just like that. I almost fell over. <laughs> but they paid for our uniforms took us over and had a tailor and everything. They were real nice. Yeah, he was. Then, oh, 
were allowed to bring back 10 carton cigarettes at 45 cents a piece. So we hit this new thing here, and this one officer, or chief, well, he might have been a one officer, he's all blue, I mean, gold or something. Anyway, you can only take out two packs of cigarettes. And anyway, I figured, boy, you're talking about umpteen carton of cigarettes in uh, Ocienza from Chicago. I said, you know what? We're going to do this. We took a parachute bag and we put 40 carton in this thing. What are you going to do, Lane? I said, we're going up in officer's territory. Of course, you weren't allowed up there. Anyway, we sat outside here. And I waited till a pilot come along and he had campaign things here. He was the lieutenant commander, and I told him, uh, I said, sir, I says, uh, I'm in trouble. And he saw, you know, what we had, but I didn't have these on, I just had my things, you know. Anyway, he says, well, what can I do for you? And I said, you know what? I told him about what happened. I said, they said we could bring back 10 carton overseas. This man says, you can only take two carton, I mean, two packs out. <clears throat> and, you know, you could hide them in your socks, maybe, but anyway, he said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want you to carry them out because they're not going to ask you. He said, well, he did it for me. Put them in a cab for me. <laughs> I said, sir, you want some cigarettes? Nope. He said, go ahead. Now, see, if I had carried them, they wouldn't let me take them out. Mm. Anyway, I sold mine, whatever I had up here in Chicago waiting on a train, I sold them for $45. <laughs> I don't know what he did with his. <laughs> and that's something. But anyway, it was quite an experience, though. And uh, I was happy to serve and all that, but I was one of the lucky ones because I figured I never did know what happened. The other, say, 18 men was with us that went over. I don't know what today, mm -hmm. except Bob. Mm -hmm. And Bob did come over here in 51 and knocked on my door. And we visited for a while, yeah. Then Titus Boy went to college here. Two of the pilots picked up their masters here. And the one boy, I met in uh, Norman, Oklahoma. That was advanced engine school. We went there. And uh, he was here on Wright and Wright Street and yeah, Wright Street and Green. And we come up with a car. I was selling insurance. And he hollered at me. So we went over and talked to him. And I happened to be down in there when they had all these officers and the can and everything. They gave him the Navy Cross. And what happened? He was on a PBY flying boat, and they landed. The engine went wrong, and the guys were working on it, and these Japanese come over, going to take him over. He grabbed a machine gun and mm. killed them all. By God, they gave him the Navy Cross. They said he stayed that plane. Yeah, yeah, that was something. <laughs> he was something. What, exp what do you think was the end result or the... Or what did you take away from that experience? Or how did that influence uh, your life? It, it, I think one thing, it, it taught you to, to be with people, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and work with people. Mm -hmm. And you marred them, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, respect people. But uh, when I look back, I had a lot of good times, so don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I felt we had a, and they did too, we had too much pressure on it. I mean, for young people probably. Mm -hmm. We was an older, maybe we wouldn't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I always felt I had a lot of pressure on it. Mm -hmm. But now some of them could sit underneath the airplane and smoke the cigarettes and hear you, like that sheet you had there? Mm -hmm. You have maybe five sheets to check on this plane? They would sit there, smoke. Me, I went around, pull the things open and check them. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have done it. I don't know. But I thought, well, I've got to do this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Of course, mm -hmm. that was part of your, your work. It sounds like you were very responsible. Well, and maybe that's the reason they always let me have something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, you know what? Uh, I didn't have... Uh, I had uh, 85 semester hours in 50, 51, maybe, with Mr. Colbert college here, you know, commercial college over on 4th Street, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, Dana had gone through here. Uh, his, his father was president of the college, went through here, and, and his uncle too, and they were super, one of the superintendent schools when they started that years and years ago, back in the, 
I would say in the 30s, late 30s. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I had higher accounting than business. And uh, by me doing my job right and everything, when it come time to graduate, the other men that, that was vets too, some of them, not all of them, they didn't complete all this here and they had a diploma, but it wasn't signed. I think out of uh, six men, I had a, a signed diploma. Mm. Yeah, on account I finished this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, when I come over to university, then when I come back to O&M, <clears throat> uh, they give me four ladies, four, four young women, and we had key punchers in those days. Remember? Yeah. Anyway, and then I had a girl out here who did some posting. And uh, next thing you know, uh, probably a year, maybe, I don't know, maybe two years or maybe five years. Anyway, I was with them. I was how long was I with them? From 20 years, I think. Anyway, who was picked to go to Labor and Relations School? Floyd. Oh, that's I almost great. fell over. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I got 15 credits from them from uh, Professor Wolf. Yeah, yeah. Your I did. hard work paid off. Yeah, I got, I got 15. But uh, a lot of people probably made more money than I did. Well, it's accountants in those days. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe. But you know what? I was accountant one. But I was way up on the list all the time. Where if you got accountant two or three, you start down here. But I was always up high. So I couldn't complain. I didn't get rich or anything, but I, we did all right. Um, Henry is going to change tape. Would you okay. like to complete the interview, or would you? Or is there, well, we better complete. We it. don't have to do that. Is 